Right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Carl, Carl Lehman from Dream It, Planet, Live It, and I am joined today by the fabulous Sarah White. Say hello, Sarah. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> I'm telling you, for anybody who's been watching this Coffee with Carl series, you're in for an absolute treat today. Um, I've known Sarah for, what, probably the better part of 10 years now, Sarah? I'd yeah. say so. Time yeah. flies. Um, so we know each other pretty well. So you might find this be uh, a little bit different to previous uh, Coffee with Carl uh, interviews. But uh, Sarah describes herself as a serial entrepreneur, <laughs> passionate about empowering others to be more, to have more and to achieve more. Is that right? Well, I've learned that if you put a really captivating headline on your LinkedIn, um, then that, that scores you more points and gets you more, more sites. So we're maybe, you know, slightly over the top, but I'm just going to roll with it. I wouldn't say it's slightly over the top at all, Sarah. <laughs> you see, the thing is, for anybody watching this uh, video, uh, what I know about Sarah is that she uh, runs a number of businesses very, very successfully. What I really sort of uh, respect about you is that you have this really high standard. Um, you have this really high standard about what you expect uh, from your, your, your business, your team, the people that you work with. But above all else... You also have a wicked sense of humor. You believe that business should be fun. Uh, and I know that we've shared a few jokes along the way as well. So um, the reason I, I'm kind of holding these type of interviews, Sarah, is basically, I don't know if you remember back when lockdown started, I don't know about you, there's all this crap sort of going out on social media of doom, gloom, negativity, and everything that goes with this. And I thought, you know what, we have to stop this. Uh, we have to put something out there that gives people some hope, it gives people some optimism, maybe some positive energy, just, just something that they can watch and think, do you know what, I'm learning bits and bobs from these people and the ramblings that they're having over coffee. Um, mm. So Given where we're at right now, I mean, what opportunities do you see for, for, for business in, in the current climate? Opportunity will be what you make it. Um, and unfortunately, there is some businesses that it is outside of their control. And um, that saddens me. It really does. However, they are in the minority the vast percentage of business can take the time, can take funding options that have been available from the government and uh, different things and uh, to take a step back, take stock, realize what works, what hasn't worked, stop flogging dead horses that they may have been flogging in the past because there's an emotional connection there. Um, and this time it can be well spent to kind of Redesign and refocus. Although overwhelm can creep in quite a lot, I think. Yeah. Suddenly it's like, oh, what's going on? I can't control this. Um, if, as long as we can make sure overwhelm doesn't come on, uh, the time is very much now um, and has been for a good few months, actually. All right, we've had a bit of an issue uh, this week with uh, Boris and his, his six ruling, um, which I think is going to put a little bit of a kibosh onto certain things. And again, anyone who was a little bit hesitant before. I think now is, again, if that little light bulb's gonna go off here again, am I doing the right thing? Um, but th there's so many opportunities out there and it's just realizing which ones. A, a big business was once a small business that just kept doing the right things. Right. So it's working out what are the right things. And if you know what they are, then full steam ahead, we can, we can rock and roll and, and seize every opportunity, 100%. I mean, what I like is you've, you've got business experience in a number of different areas, haven't you? And yeah. uh, it's one of those things you also mix with a lot of other businesses. So you must get a huge amount of insights from those that are cooking on gas to those that are just really sort of eking out an existence and teetering on the edge I'm and lucky. everything in between. I'm really, really lucky that, for one, all three of my businesses have um, been pivotal to helping other businesses right. to keep going throughout. So I, I count my lucky stars a lot that I'm in that position. Um, but then, yes, I, I can just be this huge sponge. And if I soak up all the expertise and the knowledge and the experience from those around me, um, and even just a small percentage of that uh, is, is retained, I'm, I'm able to 
help others and go, well, hold on a minute. Actually, I was having a conversation with somebody else. But it's then remembering that over the time as well. But having been in business for a lot of years now and ridden that, ridden, 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 ridden that huge roller coaster. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really helped me to just, and my natural style is just to say it how it is. And so because I'm not fearful of that and I'll just come out and say it, um, that's when people go, well, I don't normally get asked that. I'm like, well, okay, I'm, I've already asked it. I can't take it back now, I'm afraid. <laughs> Give me the answer. Uh, and then we can work this out together. So I love to be a sponge. Um, as I've got older, I've learned, learned when I need to kind of stop um, absorbing. Uh, otherwise you just become that big gooey mess on the side of the bath, probably with a little bit of soap scum around it as well, because it's oversaturated and a bit grey. Um, so experience has taught me when enough's enough. Um, but other than that, I just, I just love, I soak up, soak up, soak up, soak up. And then I just let go what I don't need, keep the rest and then kind of apply it where I can to kind of help others. So yeah, sponge, not a rock. That was something I heard Clive Woodward say, actually. It's a presentation he did. Um, the rugby geezer. Yeah, yeah. Not a massive rugby fan, but Clive Woodward, he was at an event I was at in Portugal. And he had a lot to do with the 2012 London Olympics bid yes. and the run-up to that. Um, and it, it always resonates with me. He said, be a sponge, not a rock. A rock gets chipped away at and bits fall apart. Whereas a sponge, it'll just keep going and going and going until it kind of just sits in its own... Its own I was going to say juices. Is that an appropriate word? <laughs> Never mind. I said it. Can't take it back. That's fine. Uh, we like the no BS approach. Um, as you know, my model is very much about telling people the truth about money. And the one thing I always say is, can you handle the truth? Because you know, mm. can you handle the truth? It's like, you know, sort of... Uh, um, um, one of those things that a lot of people can't and actually when you've got a you know a direct message to give some people can't take it you know thankfully you and I deal with like business owners who are usually that type of sort of breed that go I don't want all the flannel don't want all the bs just tell me what the time is not how the clock works yeah. um you know I was just thinking about what you said then I jotted something down as you were chatting there about you know, you know the... I thought I saw your pen moving yeah yeah, yeah yeah I'm not I nodding off and I'm going down there, there. It, 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 one of the things that thought, uh, struck me is you were talking about the sponge and, uh, you know, simulating stuff, uh, but knowing when enough is enough is, is the fact that, you know, um, you know, what, say what you're trying to say, Carl, thinking can become negative, whereas action is always positive. Yeah. So yeah, but so you can also be a busy idiot, Carl. So you've got to be careful on that as well with the right. action. Um, and so it's a fine line it, it, it's such a fine line but it's also not giving yourself a serious amount of grief if you fall off it yes um actually dusting yourself off and getting back on yeah sometimes you get back on two or three meters further forward yes falling off is valuable yeah um but then sometimes you get back on and you two or three meters back yeah um if you can get back on at the same place we need to be grateful um, but moving forward, but yeah, definitely, get, totally get get the um, the thought process on that one. Yeah, just sometime. I'm coming back at you now. No, Go on. This for Carl. Let's try and in the table. <laughs> so obviously, Clive Woodward. That's something that he said all them years ago. That was years and years years ago. Really had an effect on me. From your perspective, then, what's somebody ever said, or what's your standout quotation or philosophy that is always in your mind? Oh, that, that's a dead easy one for me. And you're probably going to second guess what it, what, what it will be. Uh, it's a guy called Stephen Sutton. And yeah. um, Stephen uh, had a message that basically we've got 86,400 seconds every day, each and every day. And if you had 86,400 pounds put into your bank account every day and you got to use it, but you had to use it wisely. And if you didn't use it, it just poof, it went, then uh, you'd, you'd make sure, wouldn't you? You'd make absolutely critically sure that you'd spend that money wisely. And so it is. We don't have that money, do we? But we do have that time, 86,400 seconds each and every day. So, you know, my model is very much about helping people to live the lives that they want, not just finances for finances sake, but helping people live the life that they want without fear of running out of money. But it's about that life plan first and foremost, you know, tick tock, tick tock, you know, precious time is slipping away. So 
Stephen's moral of that 86,400 seconds and, you know, having fun, um, you know, just that, that, that's probably the standout thing for me. And I know you saw Stephen speak as well. So it's, um, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Make lemonade. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 There you go then. I'm, I'm thinking, and I'm glad that actually I can, uh, resonate with that because, uh, uh, Stephen was what a top guy, top guy. And I feel privileged that obviously I was able to, um, get to know him over, over, over that period of time and uh, help him out a bit, a bit. And yeah, bless his heart. Yeah. For anybody watching this, actually, just a bit of background on that. So, uh, Stephen, uh, taught drums to, uh, a friend's, uh, son, a guy I went to school with his son. And they contacted me when um, I kind of helped run a networking group in Litchfield, which is part of um, Sarah's um, area. And uh, we got Stephen along to do, do a talk. And it was kind of his first public address to sort of business people. And it was just amazing. And I can remember finishing that meeting and saying, Sarah, Sarah, we, we've got to get this guy on a bigger platform. And you were very kindly got him onto a regional platform. And again, standing ovation, hit it out of the park. Um, in parallel, at the same time, I was working with the financial services company that we're linked to. Um, we got him onto a regional meeting there, which uh, was just outstanding. I can remember having to introduce him. Uh, at that meeting and the local director said to me he said Carl do you, do you really want to do this he said because um, the CEO of said big wealth management group is here today so don't well he actually said don't fuck up um, and he said so if you don't want to do it I'll do it I said I've got this uh, anyway, I did it. And as I sat down, he wrote me a note saying, you hit it out the part, Layman, well done. But the great thing about that was it then elevated Stephen to be able to then address uh, a huge audience at the O2 Arena in London. O2, yeah. And subsequently, we managed to raise literally millions of pounds for a very valuable cause, the Teenage Cancer Trust. Um, so uh, that was a one of the highlights, I think, of my career, actually, to be able to play, play a small part in that. And I know that, you know, you played your part in that as well. And um... I still try and do a bit for TCT now, if I can. No, nothing major, don't get me wrong, but just a few bits and bobs. Um, a, a family member as well, a uh, member of the kind of extended family, uh, was uh, unfortunately I had to have some treatment and things. And uh, he does things for TCT now. And... Uh, if I can, I always kind of drip, but you know, the clicking the buttons, yeah. look and always a share. So something every time I do it, it just makes me think of Stephen. So yeah, big, big influence on life. Big influence, big on, influence life. on life. I'm um, speaking about influences on life. I'm sure you influence lots of, lots of people, but from your own perspective, what, what's your burning desire, Sarah? What's your burning desire? <coughs> <sighs> yes. <laughs> so um i have a bit of a life plan thanks to you I remember you challenging me a number of years ago uh of where i want to be and at what point um and i want to have complete freedom at 45 okay and that is so that the plan is um networking that business i want that to be my legacy i want to be that the business that goes where i can go off and, and enjoy later life kids hopefully will be off at uni having moved out and doing the sort of finding their own feet um and i want to go off for a few years with andy travel see the world enjoy um having hopefully got that financial freedom to do that and then be able to come back and do grandparent duties uh, and support my kids like my family has supported me over the years I did have my children quite young um, and that's because I didn't think I could have kids and and so it all kind of happened a little bit younger than I would have planned but you you you're grateful for what you've got and you hold on to it for dear life so uh, Brady's what nearly 16 uh, Tammy 12 soon to be 13 and I'm 37 so by the time I'm 45 I'm lucky my children are going to be at that point where they should be independent okay. uh, if I've done my job properly they should have a good work ethic they should have a good inner moral compass and then Andy and I can go off and still be young enough to go and enjoy some of the things we want to do so there is a bit of a bucket list and um, has been for, for a long time so 
if I can then keep coming back to networking and keep helping people, still keep my finger on the pulse. I don't want to go numb up here. <laughs> the pulse a little bit, dip in, dip out. But I've got a burning desire to be 90 years of age, to be stood on a stage somewhere in, in the UK and um, presenting an award to a business owner that has done great things uh, for others. So, and if I can be doing that under the networking banner, because I've built that legacy, then do you know what? I've had a good innings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happiness. Just, just want those nearest and dearest to be happy. If you can help someone else along the way, life ain't all that bad, is it? No, no. And having met up with you recently uh, when you were down here with your family, I can tell you from an outsider looking in, your kids uh, certainly must have a great work ethic. They've also got great personalities. You know, you know a lot of teenagers looking, uh, uh, you know, they had something to say. They were engaging. They would look an adult, you know, in the eyes and they were not only confidently communicating, but, you know, they had humor as well. I could see that clearly they get it from their mum and dad. You know, clearly they get it from their mum and dad. <laughs> Jacob's the same, I think, as well. And, you know, younger people spend more time around adults as well. It gives them, they need to have the respect if they know where the line is and not to cross it. Um, and they also know what a mum glare is, which is a shut up, sit down. <laughs> And you know what? They can't. They can't go. Uh, they can't go too far wrong. And uh, you know, Jacob and my kids, they they do spend a lot of time with adults, so they can engage in that conversation. I think that's a life skill. Yeah. We don't tolerate grunting around here. It's like, pardon, what was that? That was a grunt. Um, would you like to articulate yourself a little bit better? If you're really struggling. Do me a favour. Write it down with a pen and paper, not on your computer. So we have those arguments here all the time. <laughs> I bet it's fun and games in your household. It really is. Oh, it is. Uh, I can see that the strong personality is coming through as well there. So uh, that's uh, going to be a really interesting dynamic in years to come, I think. There's a couple of chips off the old block, I have to say. Um, and uh, Tammy's got the stubborn streak, which is more her dad's side than mine, actually. Right. So sometimes I won't be stubborn if it's just going to be a nightmare. Uh, I'll just say, I'll oh, sod it. Uh, let it go glass of wine or a gin to be had uh just do it that way instead but uh tammy's got that stubborn streak off her dad so god help me when she's a little bit older but never mind we'll be fine so i've got a question for you so um I, I, I've never asked you this question, but I'd be curious to see... see, see be what gentle you, with me, Carl, please. I will do. Be I'll gentle. do. It's an easy one, hopefully. I mean, I'm just curious, because obviously, you know, um, knowing you as I do, you, you, you seem to be, in my mind's eye, having been somebody who's got their proverbial together from a, from a very early age. You know, that's, that's the impression I get. You seem to be a strong lady who definitely knows her mind. Um, and, you know, obviously that's been shaped by your own upbringing and influences in your life so you know who was your childhood hero and what what did you learn from them it's it's the family as a whole uh, yeah. and it's uh my mum uh, was a this is showing her age now she was a, a yts uh, for a company on a, a YTS scheme. So modern day is of an apprentice, is it, I think, or something? Yeah, yeah. So she joined right in at the bottom and um, she worked her way up through there. And then a number of years later, um, the directors of that company wanted to retire and my mum ended up buying that company. Wow. Um, but be, even before that, my grandma and granddad, they run their own businesses, a taxi company. They had a, a hotel on the, the beach front at Blackpool. They started off in a and b in a back street and then worked their way up to a prom hotel, which wow. I assured apparently was a big thing in the time frame they did it in. Um, and everyone kind of within the family was um, entrepreneurial to a degree, I think. And although... I decided, having seen the long hours mum and dad put in with, with you know, numerous companies and, and different things that, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to go off and be a lawyer. I'm going to get my qualifications um, and I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to be on a £1,000 an hour. That's what I'm going to do. Um, and life doesn't always pan out how you, it, you think it does. But one thing I knew for certain was that there's, there's 
there's nothing for nothing in this world and that you're never gonna kind of um, unless you're born with a silver spoon in your mouth um, it comes from sheer grit hard work determination and people pulling together yes and so it's i can't say there's one shining light it's been everybody but it is definitely family mm. and being taught from a young age to you know earn your pocket money mm. it's the things that you can do around the house and if you want things you've got to do things to achieve them and things will not get put on your lap yeah. so uh definitely a, a multitude of influences grandparents parents etc um and I, I think that that's probably true for most people really and do you know what carl it's like i think i have told you this before but i've had my fingers burnt with people who i have uh, put on a pedestal right and idolized um and thought these people are are inspirational and then I have met these people. So more, you know, celebrity kind of, if you call them that, but um, more infamous is probably the right word. Okay. I've then met them because I've done everything I can to, to meet them. And they've been a massive disappointment. Oh, really? And they've been like, what a pillock. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was my polite wish. I was trying yeah. to think. I, I could see it going through your brain. Did you see the cogs? Yeah. I think I'm, I'm crap at poker sweet because it's written all over my face. Um, so you can tell normally what's going on here with this here. Um, and they've been a disappointment. But one thing in life that's never been a disappointment to me is family. Right. Um, so I now try and drill that through to my kids. Yeah. Um, and anyone else that I come to. And I'm, I'm again, I feel lucky. That I've, I've got that family unit because not everybody has mm. I've got that family unit you know that's when they need to look outside and these are the people we want to try and attract and work with and build a relationship with so we can just try and make their day-to-day -day a little bit easier mm. you you love helping people though you you understand where I'm coming from oh yeah for sure for sure I mean part of my um values is all about you know helping people and um a little story backstory on this was you know I, I almost quit doing financial services some years ago now just simply speaking because um well how can i put it politely um well don't have to put it politely do we you know i mean most financial advisors are just simply selling products that's all they do they're flogging stuff and i can remember sitting on the on the sofa one evening and you know sarah my wife um mm. clinical psychologist by background so she she's renowned for compassionate leadership but uh she's probably not going to watch this so i'll say this out loud um but you know compassion necessarily doesn't apply to the husband at home so i, I think i might have got away with that um <laughs> but because one evening she said to me she goes what on earth is the matter with you that's compassionate leadership there guys um <laughs> she goes what on earth is the matter with you and um i said well you know I i'm fed up with just doing the same old thing and she goes what do you mean and I said, well, you know, we go out, we see clients, you know, we find out a need, you know, we, we sell them something that solves that need, but actually it's not really getting to the heart of the problem. She goes, so what is the heart of the problem? I said, well, you know, putting some money into a pension or putting some money into whatever it might be, it kind of helps, but it doesn't really get to the big picture. So, I mean, Sarah obviously been, you know, then a clinical psychologist by background, did some coaching with me, uh, found out that some of my core values are all about, you know, you know, making a difference in people's lives. So rather than me quitting financial services, she said to me, can you not devise a financial plan, whatever it looks like, that's different to everybody else and that you can make a difference. So out of that was born, um, nice little segue here, Sarah, was, was the financial life plan and the book itself, uh, Dream It, Plan It, Live It, which incidentally, anybody uh, uh, watching this sort of video, if you want to copy the book while, while this kind of crisis is on, you can go to dreamitplanitliveitbook.com forward slash offer. And it's just a pound. You can get a copy of that for a pound. It's retailing on Amazon for 10.99, this is. Um, so it's just part of my way of giving back, trying to help people. Um, but you know what? It's one of those things. I think, you know, as a society, we're all interconnected. 
So you definitely reap what you sow. So if you put good, good stuff out there, do you know what? Good stuff will come back. Um, and, you know, it's just the age old sort of, you know, I, I wrote down another word as you were chatting a minute ago about the influences in your life. It was it, 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 what one word resonated in my head was all about standards. You know, it's about having challenging, good, honest, truthful standards that, you know, today and only for today you kind of do and as you said earlier if you if you kind of fall off the horse as it were and you screw up because we're human then tomorrow you can get back on the horse again and you go be kind to yourself and today for only today these are the exacting standards i'm going to get to um and the little phrase i always say to the, the teams I, I work with inch by inch it's a cinch yard by yard it's hard so you know it's one of those things if you can break it down into little baby sized chunks whatever it is that you're doing in your business in your life or whatever um, I feel like I'm around. Hang on, this seems to have switched around the other way now. What's going on here? I'm clever at this, you see what I mean? So here's another one for you, Carl. Satisfaction is everywhere. Strive for delight. So this is something I say a lot. And uh, one of the things I um, do, first of all, when, uh, when I'm trying to work with somebody to help them kind of grow the business, uh, first thing I do is say, right, tell me where we're currently at and i'll get them to try and classify where their current clients sit on a ladder of loyalty okay and then i'll say to them right i want to know everybody who has only ever bought from you once we're going to give them shopper status nothing more that you either scratched an itch um is that the right way around yeah itch to scratch scratch an itch um, or it was in the moment it was the right price they were you were you was there and then I said, but what have you done to educate them how to buy, how to buy from you again, how to make them a, a great customer? Sure. And work on that a lot. But then I'll go and say, knowledge is power. You need to know everything about those people. The people who've bought from you multiple times, what more do you know about them than the people who've bought from you once? Let's talk about that. Let's look at that. And when we start marketing really niche, because we've got that knowledge, it, it's a lot lower cost investment of marketing. But then they'll say to me, they'll go, I can survey my clients. That's how I can get more. I can send them a satisfaction survey. What? <laughs> Stop. So can we just go, what does satisfied mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, you met expectation. whoop de woo mm -hmm. Expectation was that low in the first place? Yeah. Nothing to write home about? Yeah. What I said, if you send out a customer satisfaction survey, that activity must cease immediately. I said, right now, you need to go back out to these people and say, how delighted were you? How over the flipping moon were you? How ecstatic were you? Um, and definitely no kind of quota where there's a middle score and somebody can sit on the fence because it chafes. Reduce the number down and make it so they've got to go one way or the other. That's right. more valuable. Um, but 100% satisfied is not good enough. Meeting expectation isn't good enough because there's too much ambiguity about what an expectation is for different people. And, and like you say, my expectation is high. Yeah. So actually, therefore, if my expectation is high, meeting that expectation to others is like on another level, on another planet, it's good. Yeah. And they're just strip back, stripping back the ambiguity, I think. Yeah. Um, is what we need to do and if we can do that ultimately and whether that's with you dream it planet live it everyone's dreams different yeah so therefore if the dream's different the plan to get there's got to be different so sure. it's to be unique and specific to the individual but asking difficult questions to get it out of them then they can go off and live it 100 um but i think people also when you know you say to me about um the, the, the bit before about people, what, what they think in their standard, or if they dust themselves off and get back on. Sometimes people are a little bit deluded. And that, that's something you've got to look out for. Um, because they think they brush themselves off and got back on. And then they fall off again the next day. And yes, you've got to be kind to yourself. I, I picked up on, on what you said there. Be kind to yourself. But don't... don't and, enable that kind of learned helplessness and, and delusion and um, that you are giving it everything you've got when you're blatantly not but invest in some close people near to you 
who you like what you say, they say, you like the sound of it, but don't just give it lip service. Go and talk to them on a one-to-one -one basis and let them have a conversation with you. You see, family have been my biggest strength, I think, and my biggest influence, but also there has been time because they are family where you have to stick a bit of a barrier up. Yeah. Um, because otherwise, it, it be, you eat, eat, sleep, live, breathe, but also the family know you better and they can be your biggest saboteurs. Mm. So it's knowing when and not. And again, this comes back to the sponge in the rock and when to keep soaking up and when not. There's, there's so many pitfalls we can all fall into. Um, but it's just knowing to kind of take a step back when you need to and get those trusted people around you. If there's a heavy family influence, make sure there's a couple of people who are completely unbiased. Yeah, I was going to say that. It's one of those things that, uh, you know, family can be great because they can be your greatest champion. But equally, you know, I'll, I'll give you an example. So my, 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 my old man. So <clears throat> you've got to imagine this. So my father was German, caught the tail end of the Second World War, uh, was fighting on the Eastern Front in Germany uh, in a place called Stalingrad, uh, shot and wounded and was literally on the last plane out of Stalingrad before it fell to the Russian army. Um, ended up being over here. He got captured in on, on the Western Front, was a prisoner of war. Um, you can imagine this, you know, the end of the war, you know, you're German, you stay in England and you, know, and you didn't build a life. Anyway, long story short, we can go to this another time. Uh, Dad ends up being, you know, director of different, different companies. He ends up, you know, running a financial financial services sort of practice um, and um, you know he was extremely proud of what he he'd achieved in his life and to be honest you know I, I, I am as well but back in the day when I started working with my dad because I, I, I did an apprenticeship sort of with him my mum my mum always if we we're on holiday and people would say oh what do you do for a living my mum would always say oh my husband and my son they're in insurance now it used to grate on me so much because when you're in insurance people watching this if they are a certain age they won't remember this but certain people will you used to have the man from the prudential or the man from the pearl or the man from the britannic who would come around your house and pick up 25 50p a week put it into an endowment policy that was the man from the bloody insurance <laughs> meanwhile you know i i consider this now and, and my dad was so well ahead of his time i mean back in the day i'm talking where are we here, 1985, 1986 time, you know, he was getting company directors to put their commercial premises into pensions, you know? So he's removing, you know, their, one of their biggest assets and putting it into a pension scheme, which, you know, back in the day, it, th that was groundbreaking, absolutely groundbreaking. And, and my old man was doing this. And meanwhile, my mum was saying, we were insurance salesmen. It was just, what the hell is that all about? So, you know, mum's perception and mum's view of what we did and what actually what we did were two very, very different things. So it, that, you're absolutely right. You need people who are not going to sabotage you in that regard. I mean, I try and surround myself with good people um, who will call call you out. So sometimes you, know, you might say, well, I've done this, I've done that, I've done the other, I've done a great job. And then, you know, people like yourself or other people might go, uh, I smell a little bit of BS here, Mr. Layman. Actually, you know, let's let's get to the truth of the matter what is the real and it's that having that people who hold you accountable for you know making sure that you're running the race for the right reasons and you're doing all the actions that you need to do would you agree 100 percent. and if, if you surround yourself with those people then if they do say something not not getting you back up um because again that's that's something that that i i see and i can pull foul with that. I have to walk away and just go outside, normally top up nicotine levels, increase <laughs> uh, caffeine and caffeine and nicotine. But it it's knowing to walk away before I open my mouth. Um, and if I disagree with what they're saying, um, to kind of this goes back to working with teams, I think, is is don't coach in the moment because the emotion's too high. Right. Um, so to take the, the thing away, then come back to it and say, you remember when you said this to me, um, can we just revisit that? Because I've given it a little bit of thought. Um, and my view is this. So if I share with you my view, could we, could we talk that through and see if we can find some common ground? Um, and that's, that's come with age. When I was 25, 26, 27, oh no, I used to be like a bottle of pop. <laughs> 
you know, a bottle of Coke with uh, Mentos in it or whatever you put in, boom, up I went. Um, whereas I think age and maturity is to let it die down in that moment, walk away and then revisit it at a later stage, not let it get you back up, get angst um, and become combative um, because that, that's not going to achieve anything. Mm. Um, it's going to kind of create anxiety and, and, and drama where it doesn't need to be. Wherever, wherever there's complexity and drama, abundance cannot exist. Right. So got to strip that complexity and drama away. And actually we end up instilling that ourselves if we try to yeah. justify ourselves. The minute we feel like we're having to justify, we become defensive and combative. Yeah. yeah. So walk away from it is 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 what I'm trying to do more and more of. Yeah. Um and it's it's got easier the last couple of years. I still all right, you know, sometimes. Mm. I think that's just me. Um, but I try and walk away more and then revisit it at a later stage once everyone's had a chance to kind of process it up here. Yeah, um, yeah. So, I mean, you obviously work with teams, don't you? So, I mean, what, what, what are your top two tips if you were to have them for, you know, managing teams? You'll never please everyone. And don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's more like one, really, I think, maybe. But, okay, here we go again. This is a corny thing, but together everyone achieves more. Teamwork makes the dream work. Um, they're, they're the kind of cheesy ones, but actually realising that a team is people who, who come together um, to achieve a common goal. Yeah. So actually, what is the goal? And if everybody doesn't know what the goal is, then how can the team work well together? So I think it's definitely about understanding what the end game is, what's the result that we're all trying to achieve uh, and getting everybody's perspective on that. So we understand what makes each player tick, what their, what success looks like for them. And yeah. then if we can understand that we can all then work together and push forward, find that common ground again. There'll be something, there'll be a common denominator somewhere. Um, but definitely work out what that is and that'll come through feedback that'll come through longevity of relationship that will come from uh the, the the more you know people and and quick wins and successes along the way celebrate them yeah don't, don't just go well there you go no no open your mouth and go we've achieved that we've done that together yeah. so what's next what's next on the plan where are we going now yeah um, and so it's a very dynamic process i think uh, and value them, value them. Uh, people are your biggest asset or they're your biggest weakness. Uh, treat them fairly. Uh, have, have a rules of the game. This is how it works around here. This is how we do it. Uh, and if you're at a point where you, you've worked with people for a long period of time, people sometimes think we're in too deep now. This can't be changed. You can't teach an old dog new tricks, all that kind of stuff. Just get a massive stick, get on that beach, draw a massive huge line in the sand and go, right, this is today. That's that line. And from tomorrow, this is what we're going to do. And if we can all do this and we can all work together and we can all achieve it, then everybody can have their celebration, whatever that looks like. And then and only then can you start to look at, are these the right people? I think people look at and, and kind of not discredit, that's not the word I'm looking at. You know when you say, it's not possible? Mm -hmm. um, I can't think of the word, Carl. But they kind of mark their card before right. drawing that line. Okay. Like, whoa, 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 hold on a minute. Turn that mirror on yourself first. Yeah. Um, and, and look at what you did. Look at your behaviour. And if you then can tell me hand on heart, yeah. it's all about that person and nothing to do with you, then different story. Yeah. Uh, then we can look at it but there's, there's loads of things with with people and but you kind of you keep hold of the good ones with two hands and never let them go stalker status <laughs> that's fantastic and it, it's one of those things that um I, I i worked before setting up my own practice with a large national ifa and the managing partner of that practice you know had his 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 goal appear 
And he kept changing the goalposts, which became a sense of frustration to me and others besides. And we can remember saying to him, you know, look, you know, people run the race for their reasons, not your reasons. We're not running down this line to get you to that, go- that goal. You know, we're running down this line here to get our, our families to our goals and all the rest of it. But if you can get them aligned, that's when you get true synergy. Everybody's swimming in the same direction. And it's like the fishing analogy, isn't it? All the fish swimming that way. Instead of you start going all in different ways, it's going to be chaos. Um, but... Um, Sadly, this guy could never see that. And eventually it, was, it led to the kind of sort of, you know, the downfall of that organization because people then splintered off and thought to hell with this. I'm going to go and do my own thing. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's about understanding that people run for their, for, the, for their own reasons, really. So I'm just I think it's that cool. celebrating, Carl. It's that celebrating the achievement because actually it's okay to move the goalposts. Yeah. Long as it's agreed that's what's going to happen. And it's right. for the good of everyone. Because yep. if you got to the goalposts or got three quarters to the goalposts, and then you go, do you know what? We're three quarters away there. That's ahead of schedule or ahead of plan. Or mm. um, something else has happened that means the goalposts have got to be moved, um, which is going to require a little bit more maybe. Or we're going to have to go off on a little tangent to reach that goal. Um, but let's remember what we were doing in the first place and what we were trying to achieve and how we have achieved that. And we now need to celebrate that. Mm. And ourselves off and back on Monday morning, we'll then come back and we'll look at how far that has had to move. Whereas I think what people do is, is kind of move the goalposts without acknowledging where they've come so far. Exactly. So yeah. that's, that's when you get, that's when you get pissed off. Was I allowed to say that? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's okay. all good. We're all adults on here. <laughs> so uh, another question I've got for you. If you could speak to you, uh, I love this one. If you could speak to your, your 18 year old self again, Sarah, what one thing would you want to make sure that you told her? Don't be a tip 24 to 28. <laughs> Are you being hard on yourself there? No, I don't think so. I just think, um, I was just a bit of a plonker. Um, didn't really fully understand that I couldn't do it all myself. Right. Um, made my own list of priorities of what was important to me. Uh, and was just quite vocal and gobby about it. Um, so, if, if everything hadn't happened how it had, in and, and 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 the last you know sort of eighteen years hadn't been what they are, I wouldn't be where I am now. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have everything around me that I have, and therefore I'm grateful for that. So, it wouldn't be to do anything else really differently, or you know, stay at uni. I only lasted three weeks at uni. Absolutely hated it. Couldn't stand it. Sick of education. Came back. Stay at uni. Well, no, because you know it wasn't right for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not that dissimilar to what I was back then, really, in terms of. That. So I don't think that was going to be right for me. Uh, um, I just see that window, twenty four to twenty eight, Carl. Where looking back. Am I proud of who I was then? Probably not. Mm. Probably not. Um, and if I could, and it caused a lot of, of kind of, um, not pain, that's not the right word, but quite a bit of knocking of, of who I was. And, and I wasn't around a lot for, for the family. I was, I was away a lot and I chose to probably play hard I always believe work hard and play hard but I think sometimes I chose play hard um over coming home and and probably spending more time at home Mm. a decent amount of cash in the bank and I wanted to enjoy it and I I just got things a little bit mixed up priority wise and if I could go back and change that um that that'd be the only bit I think really everything else has been a learning curve I've learned from it um and mistakes are only mistakes if you don't learn from them yes uh, but that that four that kind of three four year window not not my proudest moment didn't deal very well with grief losing my granddad and stuff and so i didn't handle that very well um and that just outwardly protruded in in who i was a bit bolshy a bit i am bolshy i am mom i, I get that but knowing when to just tone it down and to try and get your point across with sincerity 
rather than just he who shouts loudest. Mm. Uh, I've got a post-it note on pretty much every screen that I go on to these meetings that says W-A-I-T. Wait, uh, why am I talking? Uh, and it's just that, that little reminder. Mm. Is this adding value? Um, is there somebody else that could be talking right now that could be giving that same value? You and I, it's a bit different, but in, in the online world, um, in the virtual meeting rooms, there are some people where actually it's just like you, you clearly need to get out a little bit more if you can and it's safe to do so because I really have been listening to that same voice now for 45 minutes and actually I can't even remember what the question was. Yeah. So I've got why am I talking? And that's part of that process that I did of just sitting and, and listening to these, one of these. Absolutely. Two ears, one mouth. Try and use it in that proportion. Yeah, yeah which is hard for someone like me. Well, I think anybody who's expressive, you know, it, it's hard, you know, um, but um, questions are the answers. I can't remember if it was you who said that or somebody else in the kind of networking world has said that. Um, but, you know, Alan Pease, good book. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it, 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 it's, it's one of those things, if you listen hard enough, you know, people tell you what they want, you know, and that's, I guess in the networking world, that's been quite hard because you feel like you've almost got to, you know, da -da, I'm here, I'm on show and all the rest of it. But actually, if you can, you know, just pull people, you know, it's, it's an art. I wouldn't say I've got it nailed, but um, it's an art that, you know, you know, people can, can do because you know what it's like, you know, back in the day when we used to have proper, you know, face to face meetings, you know, hello, I'm so and so here's not and you think, Oh, I'll take three steps backwards, please. Thank you very much. Whereas <laughs> I would always try and ask curious questions. Oh, what brings you here today? And, uh, you know, what is it exactly you're looking for? And blah, blah, blah. And if you think, um, make me feel special is what I used to imagine written across somebody's sort of forehead. Um, because like, it can be quite intimidating, can't it, to go into that kind of physical room and actually meet those people. But actually, let's not deny, that can still be the same in the virtual world as well. People can sit there, but actually, some people hate talking to a camera. Top tip I had about that was uh, a videographer that um, has done some work for me has got, um, I think it's, Mon is it Monster Zinc with the, the, the big fluffy teddy thing, yeah. like big huge one eye. Um, yeah. She's printed a picture of that off and stuck that over the camera with, so the camera goes through the one eye of the teddy. So she's talking to this cartoon character um, as opposed to thinking, oh my gosh, what am I talking to? Uh, and I, I loved that. I was like, yeah, that's a really good idea, actually, for people who are a little bit fearful. Um, and 100% agree with you that coming into a virtual room can be just as daunting as physical. Uh, and there'll be more objections, I think. Kind of, if somebody's having to drive, get up, get up early for a breakfast meeting, drive to a venue, park the car, get out of the car, walk into the venue. Kind of once they get in that venue, it, it's very hard to kind of, turn back if they weren't going to come they would have got up or not got up or forgot to set the alarm that would yeah. be <laughs> um whereas in the online world it's very e it's so much easier to kind of dip out is because there's that age old thing on oh, my internet's playing up mm. technical difficulties um so there is actually more get out clauses really i think for the virtual so they can really self-sabotage and, and make it into something much bigger than it is so what we tend to do now from a networking perspective is we offer people a technology test before the meeting because we don't use Zoom or things. We use a different platform. Um, and so we offer them a technology test. And then if they've never been to one before, then what we do is we stick them in the online room with just one other. Okay. Um, which tends to be, tends to be Jenna, you know, the fluffier side of the business. Yeah. The, the often gentle one. They yeah. tend to stick them in with me in case I scare them off. Um, but she'll do that just one-on-one -on -one and talk them through it. So actually, even though they'll be going into a room with 10, 15, 20, 25 odd people next time, actually, because they've already been through that process with one person, it removes a lot of the fear. Right. Um, so that's something that, that we try to do. But come on, the, the, the top slogan of 2020 is going to be, can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me? And then the other one's going to be, you're on mute. And then the other one has got to be the, you know, the camera angles where all you see is that bit. 
<laughs> and all the camera angles where all you can see is that bit, yeah. which I don't like. And in fact, this angle is terrible for all my double chins, I have to say. Um, but or the big glare behind them from all the light flying in and and um i have this thing about called a forgiving fortnight this is where my tolerance and standards really do come and cropper you know because if we're still going can you hear me can you see me i can forgive you for a fortnight after that so crikey o'reilly what are you doing you know i was like people there still six weeks after lockdown going Oh, I couldn't get the Zoom to open. I'm like, flipping hell. Can you hear me? Honestly, I swear that is going to go on my, it's going to go on my gravestone. I swear that. <laughs> 2020, the year of, can you hear me? No, so, we can't. See, you're laughing because you know it's true. Yeah. And then the thing of, sorry, I missed our meeting. I was sat on Teams, not Zoom. And it's like, well, why were you on Teams? Why were you on there? And then they'll be like, I was on Google Hangout, you know, not on Jitsi. And it's like, but where have you made this stuff up from? Who told you to do that? And it's like, no, I just think it was an epic diary fail. And now we're just blaming technology for everything. It's the new flat tire. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, oh, this is all meant to be about positivity, but I just feel like I've had a therapy session in the last four, se four minutes Why I got my, can you hear me out? No, this is really good. This is great. I'm sure people will be uh, laughing in their coffees here. This is uh, great stuff. We can all relate to it, can't we? <laughs> if this is must-see TV, flipping it, we've got a problem, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> oh. now, Lisa, so what, what else do you think we should be talking about? <laughs> Well, it depends how much of a therapy session you want this to be. <laughs> um, I think of something that's happened like within the last week um, and, and swerving away from anything uh, political or corona related. Oh, I'll tell you what. So, mm -hmm. uh, objection. I am too busy to, uh, I'm that busy now. So people have been... Uh, Obviously looking for ways to that word I hate pivot uh, right. that to stay on the netball court yeah 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 pivot um but I need to pivot and I need to do this I need to do that I need different customers because the way I've been currently doing it hasn't been working and I'm like music to my ears come on then talk to me let me I'll tell you where to go or from my experience how best to do it is it going to be looking at your existing customers exploring that route and not doing it or do you need to go networking with your marketing uh does your website need a polish up what what is it let's go right through it and I love that um big sponge and I soak it all up and I'll go right try this this and this uh come back to me three weeks let's see what's worked and then we'll put another plan in place really quick action points so people join networking they pay the money uh it's an annual thing you know this and then they've been there for five months and then the attendance starts to dip they're not turning up so right do the thing get into, is everything okay are you well uh you know is family okay yeah 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 yeah. sorry about that i just i just missed the meeting oh okay no worries i'll see you next time all right sweet as long as you're okay that's what matters that forgiving fortnight comes in again you rock up again and they're still not there and you're like what the hell's going on here babe so you go back and touch she's everything i'm just too busy i don't know what to do so the first thing that they give up is, when they're busy is sales and marketing and i'm like whoa wait i'm like why would you do that darling yes how forward planning is your pipeline how much forward planning is your order book mm. Uh, well, I'm definitely not going to be able to do anything for the next six weeks. Pardon? Uh, six weeks. So you're telling me that you know you're busy for the next six weeks. I said, what have you got booked in for week seven? Well, nothing yet. And you're stopping all sales and marketing activity. Can I just explain that maybe the reason we hit a problem when COVID hit and the reason we hit a problem when everything is because your business only had six weeks sustainability. Yes. That's not good enough, sweet. So we need to readjust this. But even though I try and do it cajoling and nicely and nurturing, you know, not judgmental because that's no good, they still don't get it. Mm -hmm. And they don't come. And I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You need to stop here, sweet. Just do me a favor. It's, if you're telling me you're that busy, 
talk me through what business you've been getting through it are you telling me you can't cope with and then they describe to me a c or d class client right so not a's or b's not the the bread and butter or the top kind of 20 percent of our customer base they're telling me about c's and d's you know the c customer the one that you go oh when you see their number ringing your phone the cringe and then the D ones who you actually did think temporarily for a small period of time, they might have died. Um, but actually they resurrected themselves and just came and bombarded you with a load more abuse. Those ones, the ones that don't pay their invoices on time, the ones that, you know, all of them. And I'm like, well, what, what are you patting around with that for? If you're telling me you're that busy that, you, you know, you're at full capacity, you've got to keep selling, you've got to keep marketing. But what you're going to do is you're going to specifically ask for an A class client, nothing else. And if you tell people, set that realistic level of expectation of what an A-grade class client is, and that's what you are after, they therefore can only supply you or give you more of them. And if anything else comes in, then just re-educate them to say, that isn't what I'm looking for at the moment. Thank you for thinking of me. Um, and if it does change, I'm going to come right back at you and let you know. But for now, that's not what I'm after. So that has been getting under my skin for about three, four weeks now, Carl. To be okay. And, and, and yeah, I really want to say thank you for letting me get that out there. <laughs> yeah, but how do you really feel? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I just, I just, I just, social distancing is good for me. Means I can't get my hands around my neck. <laughs> <laughs> or on their shoulders and give them a little shake. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I have to get them in a virtual room instead and go, please help me. Why do you think like that? Stop. Let's just go after the really hot shit we customers. Tell me, what do they look like? Well, I don't really know. Oh, darling, you really have got to keep sales and market. That sustainability can't just be six weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, that's a headbang. Douche. It's interesting, isn't it? Because when, when people do start sort of that kind of referral marketing and building that network and it starts coming through, you know, I've seen it a number of times with like one man bands. Um, and I guess essentially I'm a one man band, but you know, a team, a small team of people around me, but then they think, Oh, oh I can't cope now. And actually what I need to do is stop that because I can't cope. And actually, you know, you know, strategic partner said to me, well, fine, just get somebody else in alongside, keep, keep writing, you know, the, the, the business or the work, whatever it may be. And what a nice problem to have, you know, and I get that people don't always want to grow large teams, but how large yeah. does the team really need to be? Probably not as large as you think. Uh, but um, yeah, it's curious that is, but um, is there anything I else on your mind? <laughs> I think, Carl, you know, there's a lot of this comes down to mentality. mentality. This is why I do spend now a lot more time asking people questions and, and listening and soaking it up because I think there's two very different trains of thought of being one, self-employed, or two, being a business owner. Right. Mentality is massively different. Yeah. And so it's understanding that from the outset because I used to get I used to get screwed up over little things. Um because I, I was like, please, you've told me this is gonna keep your kids in food and keep a house over your a roof over your head and support the family and you're the only person bringing money in and you've told me all of that, but then you're now telling me that you can't do this or you can't achieve that or that's not possible you can't cope with this and all I can just see is that that roof over the head mm -hmm. going for the roof um and they're kind of still prattling around on the doorstep and I'm like what are you doing here sweet mm. um, so I kind of maybe I do get a little bit too in involved emotionally interpersonal circumstance um so I, maybe I need to work on that but we can we can work together if they just just let it let it out so understanding that from the beginning and now what i try to do is if i realize it's just they've just got a self-employed mentality it'll just be working for themselves forever it'll never be anybody else there might be a little bit of remote va work that they delegate out for a bit of administration but if it's only ever just going to be a kind of self-employed it's not going to be a business mentality yeah then that's when now I will 
just make sure they're okay just keep checking in give them a bit of accountability if they need but i'll go and focus elsewhere um because otherwise you're sending yourself around in circles um thinking why you not why why i ask why a lot to myself rhetorically quite a bit but you you must get that carl you must look at you know, somebody telling you what the dream is, but then if you turn around and say to them, you know, it's an extra tenner a month, um, but they're not willing to reduce their cost of coffee by a, a, one a week, you must want to sit there and just get the AK-47 out, surely. Yeah, we, we, we don't suffer fools gladly these days. Um, <laughs> it's one of those things that um, had a, had a, a client recently, actually, whereby... Um, you know, they've got a great business. It's been established a while. Uh, they've got some really good profits coming through. Um, I'm careful what I'm saying because it's kind of well known in Staffordshire, actually. Um, and it's one of those things that I said, you know, do you have clarity about what the end looks like? You know, in other words, what does, what does you know, awesome look like to you? Not, you know, satisfactory. What does an awesome, you know, retirement look like to you? And they give me sort of, you know, an answer, bang, straight away. I said, so what thought has gone into that process? You've just, bang, told me that figure. What thought has gone into that process? And they go, well, I just feel it. I said, oh, is that like you feel something in your water or, you know, something along those lines? Have you, have you kind of really sort of calculated out what your ideal lifestyle looks like so that we can actually then project that forward for inflation? We can then start challenging that and saying, well, how much money do we need in order to have that? Therefore, how much do you need to exit your business from in X many years? And no, I haven't done that. I said, but you've been in business all of these years. You're running a great business. How the hell do you... You know, if you don't know what the end looks like, how the hell do you know when you've got there? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so um, the the one director said to me, he said, well, anyway, that, that that's what I'm aiming for. Um, and the other co-director um, is his spouse, actually. Um, so anyway, we, we went off down another little tributary and sort of came back. And, and I said, right, that kind of completes the call for today. We'll pick up on this. And the, and, and the lady sort of said, oh, before you go, before you go, Carl, what I really want to know is the exact number that we need. I want to know exactly what we need in that fund. I want to know exactly what we need to sell the business for. Bum, 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 bum. And I thought, oh, this is brilliant because she's actually zoomed in and going, actually, this kind of fluffy, vague thing out here is not going to is not going to do it what we need to know is exactly with clarity out here what we bloody well need. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, I guess it's one of those things I get pulled in often as a second opinion kind of advisor. Lots of accountants or solicitors might introduce me to clients. And um, <laughs> typically I'll say, so why am I here? Oh, well, my accountant tells me that you're good. In what way? Mm -hmm. um, well, you're a great financial planner, blah, 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 blah. And I'm going, yeah, that's dull. What else? What, what's on your mind? Why am I sat here, bearing in mind, you've got an existing advisor already. What is it that you're looking for that you have not yet got? Well, they tell me you're good at this, like, dream it, plan it, live it stuff. Don't really know what it means, but it sounds cool. What's that all about? And, and we kind of unpack it a little bit. And then we find out, actually, they're putting the next quid away, you know, sort of into their pension. And typically, I'll say to them, so why exactly are you putting £500 a month away into your pension? And they look at me like I've gone mad. And sometimes, there's one guy who says to me, he says, because it's a good idea, Carl, you get tax relief on it. I go... I know that, but I don't think you're getting the point, you know, and my yeah. point is this, why exactly 500 pound a month? What, what, what's the whole point about that? Well, I don't know. The accountant told me, I said, but you know, if you don't know where you're headed, how the hell do you know when you've got there? And it's that old Stephen Covey principle, isn't it? Begin with the end in mind. And I must admit, you know, you're right. I, I don't suffer fools gladly. So if they, if they kind of, you know, <laughs> They've got to be serious about wanting to get things for them, their family. Because at the end of the day, I mean, somebody, some, and somebody at a networking meeting about a month ago, and they said to me, you know, you're only in this for yourself. And I said, well, how do you work that out? On what, on what level are, are you even making that judgment? Bearing in mind, you don't know me. All, all you financial advisors, you're all the same. Oh, loved it. That was it. Right. I said, so... Let me get this right. So if you don't put money away, if you don't get your financial ducks lined up in a row, question, how is that going to affect me? 
not a jot. However, if we flip the thinking on that, if you do get your financial ducks lined up in a row and you do get your shit together, who's that going to affect? You. Yes, we benefit, but it's a win-win situation. Win -win. But don't stand there, you know, casting aspersions at me, you know, and I get it because a lot of the IFAs or bloody, you know, bank financial advisors, they are just literally peddling policies. That's all they're doing. Uh, so I kind of get where they were coming from, but um, sorry, I'm off on a bloody sort of uh, quest now. <laughs> Right, honestly, this this has got legs, right? Therapy, online therapy, where there isn't actually anybody qualified in therapy at all, or any kind of you know really coaching values or anything else. Um, but we just go off on these little these tributaries. Yeah, yeah. And, and have a little rant because it's in everyone, I think, and it's having someone that you can just do that with. I mean, we've we've had little rants like this over the years, many many. Yeah. But you always feel better. Your shoulders feel a couple of inches higher when you stand up and shake off and walk off and go, hmm, I feel better already. <laughs> There's a guy called, good. We, we both know Charlie, Charlie Hutton. And um, I sometimes send him a little sort of voice, uh, sort of memo. I go, Charlie, I've had this situation. What do you think about it? Now you know what Charlie's like. He's like, he's yeah. like surgical. He's like, whoosh, comes whoosh. in like, and you think, yes. You know, another business owner sees your business in a completely different sort of light and he gives you that kind of clarity and transparency and you just think, that's exactly what I need to do. And away you go, you're away at the races. I'm yeah. just wondering, Sarah, that actually, you know, you, you're a great advocate and, you know, people watching this might actually sort of want to sort of connect in with you. So if people are watching this and think, you know, she's not absolutely sort of, you know, barking mad and actually, you know, half <laughs> the stuff, if not all of the stuff that comes out of her mouth makes perfect sense. I know. No, you get there in the end, though. It's a roundabout way. <laughs> so how would people connect in with you? LinkedIn. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. So I on LinkedIn um, and yeah, I love to connect and uh, more than happy to have one-to-ones if people want to, <laughs> want to have a one-to-one. -one. But no, on a serious note, um, stuck in a rut, don't know where you're going. If you've got drive and ambition uh, to want to do it easier or perhaps just talk to somebody completely neutral, unbiased, just for an hour, and talk it through, more than happy to do that, even with complete strangers. I think complete strangers sometimes, it can actually be more valuable. Yes. You have people haven't got that somebody to turn to. You know, that's the passionate bit, when they haven't got that somebody. I think definitely um, connect with, yeah, connect with me on, on link, LinkedIn and uh, you can uh, have, have more of the same. I do sometimes have to come with a government health warning. That's where me and the pandemic are slightly similar. Um, but I will 100% uh, give you everything I've got. And if I wear my heart on my sleeve most of the time anyway. Um, and yes, as I've got older, I'm not, not quite so, uh, what's the word? Offensive maybe? <laughs> Who knows? What do you reckon? You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen. Sarah White is not as offensive as she once was. Well, yes. I think I'd just say a little bit more empathetically now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. understand it a little bit more. But if we can make somebody's day a little bit brighter, or we can make tomorrow that a little bit easier, then you know what? Life ain't all that bad. I think I might have said that again earlier. So, Do you know what? I, I'm really grateful for you sharing your time with us today, Sarah. And I feel I'm like... so impressed you've invited me. Thank you very much. Although I was a little bit fearful in the run up to it. You know, I've seen some of the people, other people you've had on here, that, like Olympic gold medal winners and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, well, what the heck does he want with me? But he's just been like catching up with a, with a, I was going to say an old pal, but then I thought, is he going to think I'm calling you old? Um, no, no, no. I promise. Um, but I, uh, it's been lovely to catch up and I purposely came in the living room, not in my office. So it yeah, was yeah. having a coffee and a catch up with you. I'm sat on the sofa. It's been thoroughly enjoyable. I've got a blanket over my legs. I've drank my coffee and I feel like I've had a free therapy session. So the thanks is all to you, Mr. Lehman. Thank oh, bless you. Bless you. But I'd like to say anybody watching this, if you're, if you're in business and you just want a great advocate or somebody who's going to tell you the bleeding truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, then Sarah's a great person to actually sort of have as part of your strategic alliance team. Um, albeit I'm, I'm 200 miles away from you now, but we still, we still connect. We still sort of uh, keep in touch. 
Uh, and I absolutely recommend, you know, anybody watching this, reach out to Sarah. She's a great lady, fabulous business expense, uh, business experience, business expense. I'm thinking about accountancy now. Uh, fabulous business experience, but also just a thoroughly, thoroughly sound individual. Great fun to be around. Uh, oh, missing you on a regular basis. Got to say that. Uh, but thanks for sparing your time today, Sarah. It's been I'm not going to get my head out that doorway, babe. So, <laughs> thank you very much. And ciao for you. It's been an absolute pleasure. Cheers. Thanks, Sarah. Bye, sweetheart. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh,